batteries. Yeah, it's going to be one of those videos. Uh, so, ever since um, our very special friend uh, called me a thief and a liar on his Instagram, there will be a link in the description unless he removes it, um, I decided to revisit my previous video on uh, these battery mods that I did, specifically with uh, these two mods. Um, since I made that video, some new versions came out. Retromodding made a uh, bigger battery version. Um, and Handheld Legend made a V2 or whatever they're calling this one uh, with a different color board and it uh, actually has a um, a low voltage LED support warning, I guess, whatever you want to call it, uh, built into the thing so you don't have to buy their expansion module. And, um, you know, it, I, I ended up putting, up putting off the video long enough to get the um, generic... Uh, one chip brand battery mod and then even Helder's battery mod and uh, the reason I have these bagged or in cases is because of one thing in particular that I was actually testing with these battery mods. Now I will do a more in-depth video on this uh, at some point so we're not going to discuss either of these two uh, but we will discuss this one. Um, but long story short I wanted to test uh, the uh, potential dangers of having exposed battery terminals like this because I just I don't think this is a smart idea. I think it's uh, I think it's a little bit foolish to have this design. Now, retro modding has of course a leg up on the competition in that they have an on-off switch on theirs, but in the middle of testing, I discovered uh, a quite serious flaw that I actually thought was just a um, a problem with my multimeter and as you guys know I use these cheap ass Harbor Freight multimeters that they literally give away for free um, so you know I figured what are the chances that the $40 product has a, 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 an, is an issue or the $0 doorbuster get you in the store product has an issue so I bought a new multimeter I bought several new multimeters I'm not going to go into this one, this, there won't be a video on it, but the TLDW on uh, multimeters is just buy a UNI-T, um, just right off the bat, spend a decent amount on a good multimeter and then forget about it because if you're sitting there doubting your tools, uh, you're going to have a bad time. Um, for those of you that are thinking, oh, well, I could buy a Fluke, you know, that's the best multi... Yes and no. Um, flukes are fine, but they are certified. Um, if you're not an actual electrician, you know, sticking the pokey bits into a wall, you don't need the certification. Uh, if you're just doing hobbyist shit, a $14 Unity 123T will, Unity UT123, will be more than you ever need. Uh, it'll feel good, it'll do the job every time, and it'll give you an accurate measurement, and you'll be satisfied with it. All right. I swear I'm not sponsored by them, I just, I like the multimeter. I should have bought one of these a long time ago. Anyway, long story short, I was trying to measure power consumption because I wanted to measure what would happen if I were to take a um, bit of metal and just short it on these. And I was getting really inconsistent results when I tried measuring the clean juice. Um, turns out, these things are all just defective by design. So. Again, um, there is a reason, if you've ever looked at a battery, and I will take a hobby RC battery, for example, there's a reason the terminals are recessed. There is, these are live ports. If I stick my multimeter in here, I should see, I don't know, probably like six volts or something. It's probably almost dead. It's been in, been in storage a long time, and I, um, I don't treat my batteries as well as I should. Um, oh, 7.9 volts. It's actually much healthier than I thought it was. Uh, but yeah, there's 7.9 volts on this battery. Um, and this is a hobby RC battery that can probably put out several amps. Um, so if this had uh, exposed terminals like this connector here, 
and this were too short on something, it will weld itself to whatever it shorts on, and then it will get very hot and potentially start a house fire. That is kind of what I wanted to test with these, but I found out that the clean juice has this wonderful built-in feature where that's actually not an issue because if you leave it alone for a day or two at a time, it'll just drain the battery flat and then it'll stop putting out voltage. I charged every single one of these batteries uh, to full on February 28th. You may notice, or not, because you can't actually see the multimeter, that this mod is still putting out 3.3 volts. All right. Um, this one I set off as a control. This one I left on as a control. This one is also putting out three volts. But let's let's measure the battery on the uh, retro modding unit. There's a little bit of insulation there. Sorry, I just got to poke it. Notice the battery is at 4.16 volts. A full charge on a lithium ion battery is about 4.2 volts, um, but the practical charge, you know, once you give it a few minutes for the voltage to level off is, is above 4.1 volts, but less than 4.2, usually 4.15 or so. So this is nearly fully charged battery. Let's check the clean juice, right? Oh, look at that, much lower, 3.45 volts. Interesting. So this one's not completely dead. Uh, for context, today is not the 5th. I keep forgetting to set my watch. Today is March 8th. Uh, so it has been a little over a week, a day and a week, uh, eight days. And this has drained almost completely and it hasn't even been in a console. And like I said, for context, they've all been in these boxes and every single other mod except for this one this one included, this one even tested fine, all the batteries are fully charged. So all the Helder, all the generic one chip ones, even the original clean juice tested fine. The batteries are all perfectly fine on these, uh, except for the clean juice V2. Now I had finished the vast majority of my testing aside from the somewhat destructive testing uh, and I found myself with extra batteries, so I decided to do what I thought would be a pretty neat mod. Um, I have Xbox One controllers because I play PC games and I like to use Xbox One controllers for that. I also have an Xbox One, which uses Xbox One controllers. Anyway, long story short, I ended up shoving a clean juice in this one because, like I said, I had extra batteries, I'd already taken the data I needed, and moved on. Now I noticed every single time I went to play, my controller would be just completely, completely dead and I couldn't turn it on every single time. Now, I don't play every day, play maybe once or twice a week. Uh, so there was always a period of like three or four days in between when I would charge the controller and when I would go to use it. Um, I thought it was just this mod because when I put it in here, I removed the battery connector and I filed down the PCB and I figured, well, maybe I just messed something up because I wasn't exactly gentle when I removed the battery connector. I literally ripped it off. Um, no, it turns out both of these have the exact same problem. This one also charged up on the exact same day. It has been eight days. The voltage on this one is 3.04 volts. And you may notice the battery mod isn't actually putting out the right amount of voltage. Interesting. So both of these have the problem. And you know what? I just wrote it off. Maybe, like I said, maybe I messed this one up. It happens. Should happen. You know, I didn't, I didn't really feel like investing that much time into it because it didn't really seem like that big of a deal to me. I was going to bring it up in the video and then move on. And then I noticed that this one was doing the same thing and I started getting pissed because I'm zero for two now. Um, Q Friday, I believe it was, Retro6 posts this shit to his Instagram. Uh, oh, I'm a little pissed if you couldn't tell. Today's Monday, three days ago, so this would have been Friday. He says, oh look, we've discovered that there actually is an issue, but it is a very minor issue and it only occurs on a few boards. I'm zero for two, so obviously I don't believe that bullshit. 
Uh, but he also doesn't actually post the issue. He goes out of his way to blur out the image and tells you to go check out his Discord. This post is up right now if you don't believe me. I, I don't make this shit up. So, I decided to join his Discord because what the hell? Why not? Um, it was the only way I was going to get this information. Uh, but this pissed me off, so I'm just going to go ahead and publish it for everyone to enjoy. Uh, I will take screenshots and post an imager link in the description uh, in the off chance, well, in the extreme likelihood that I get banned after uploading this video because I'm, I'm sure uh, Luke will hold a vendetta like that, just like he banned me on Instagram after I complained that he wasn't supporting my products and he said, oh, well, just message me on Instagram and then he banned me, so that was nice. Anyway, long story short, you can read through the bullshit but the issue is we need to remove one transistor here and one resistor there. Um, if you read through what he says, uh, he says that it is a very few select boards that are having issues. And the problem is that apparently he doubled up on battery protection, which seems like bullshit to me, but you know what, I never actually reverse engineered the circuit and I honestly don't care to. So we'll just take him at his word and instead of offering this information to customers, he is telling them to go on Discord and fix it themselves. And that just rubbed me the wrong way, like just about everything else Luke does. So here we are, I'm pissed off, I'm making a video. Um, yeah, that several people have tried this already. I haven't seen anyone post disaster stories yet, but I know that not everyone knows how to solder, so I know that this isn't exactly the best way to handle customer service. Um, but he is offering replacement boards for people who say they can't solder. Uh, I think he should just, I don't know, reach out to everyone who has ordered one of these and said, hey, if you have a problem, you should contact us. Um, but, you know, that's just me. Anyway, let's see if we can't fix this board. So the first step is going to be to unplug the battery. If you do not unplug the battery, you are going to have a very bad time. So let's unplug the battery. I am going to do something silly and short that out, make sure it's completely drained. And because the battery's unplugged, I feel perfectly safe doing that. Just making sure there's no charged capacitors. It shouldn't blow anything up. This would be a very poorly designed circuit if it did, but here we are. Anyway, um, next step would be to remove this from the battery, but unfortunately, I use the included adhesive, like I'm sure most people do, and this isn't coming off, not without destroying either the battery or the board or both. So we're just gonna have to wing it. Um, Batteries are very sensitive to heat, so you should never, ever, ever, ever solder to them directly or on top of them. But here we are. So, here's what we gotta do. Oops, sorry. I'm knocking into my light here. This is probably done with lead-free solder, so the first step is going to be to tin all these solder joints. And this one's a little bit difficult to get into, but we should be fine. I'll wipe that off. I'll save this for something, so I'm going to take off that extra solder. Clean the tip. And then we need to remove this resistor right here. This is likely what is causing the actual drain. This transistor is probably switching the battery on, and then the resistor is what's actually draining it. Oh god, where did that go? It just pinged off my soldering iron. Oh, it's stuck right there. Okay. Probably not going to save that, because I don't know why I would, but I'll put, it, I'll put them both in the same place. We don't need either of them. We don't need to transplant them. We don't need to do squat with them. So once that is cleaned up, just make sure there's no short on where there was a resistor. Make sure there's no short here. And now we need to install a bypass or a jumper wire. 
So I am going to use, I'm going to pull open my various lengths of assorted wire drawer. Find a wire that I think will be appropriate for this. Because there's no sense using nice, perfectly good wire when I already have a length that will work for me. And in this case, I'm using 30 gauge Kynar wire, solid core, because that's what I have. It'll work perfectly fine for this. And then what we're going to do solder it up on that side. And then we're going to solder it up on this side. And it absolutely helps if you have a PCB vise or something to put this in so it stops moving around. There we go. And then once that is soldered, come in with your flush cuts, trim off the excess wire, and in theory, that should be it. Now, I can't test this right now because I gotta charge up the battery and leave it. Um, so that is exactly what I'll do. I will plug it back in. Hopefully nothing explodes. Nothing seems to have exploded. Mod is still putting out 3.4 volts, which I thought it was supposed to do 3.3, but whatever, 3.4 is fine. And the battery is still probably low at also 3.4 volts. Oh, so is it just doing pass-through now? N no, probably not. Still seems to charge. It is pulling 1.4 amps. It's a bit, but all right. It's not unexpected. The battery is up to 3.7 volts because that's how charging works. And it is still pulling out or putting out 3.4 volts. Okay, so yeah, that's probably fine. So my next step now is to let this charge up again I will let it completely charge. I will measure the battery. I will record that. I will wait a few days. I will measure it again. Um, but like I said, today's March 8th. I am publishing this video as soon as I have it uploaded. And um, I will update the description in a few days. Um, so check, check, check the description. And I feel like this shouldn't have to be said, but just in case you didn't quite get this the first time, if you don't feel comfortable soldering this, absolutely do not solder this. Contact whoever you bought the kit from, whether that is Handheld Legend or Retro 6 or one of the other subsidiaries or eBay or whatever. Whoever you bought it from, contact them. If you're having this problem, tell them exactly what's going on. Say your battery is dying after a few days, whether you use it or not, or whatever your problem might be, and tell them you do not feel comfortable soldering that or you cannot solder that. That's, it's fine. Not everybody has the tools to do this. Not everybody has the dexterity to do something like this. And there's nothing wrong with that. They will replace your kit. Um, so anyway, sorry I'm so frustrated. I, I'm sure that came across very strongly in the video. Um, and like I said, I will let this go and do its thing and I will do some more measurements and I will let you know my findings in the description and in a future video when I uh, take a more in-depth look at the other kits. Um, and until next time, thanks guys for watching. Have a fantastic day and uh, keep on being awesome.